Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be cooking with y'all a dinner that is pretty short, simple, and to the point. Nothing too professional, but something that is like my regular go-to. Now, I'm going to do my best not to do a whole bunch of talking in this video. I'm um, not going to lie. kind of wanted this to be like a tipsy cook with me, but sadly the alcohol didn't do its work. But... First is garlic. Anyone who knows me knows I'm obsessed with garlic. And if there's something with garlic cooking it with some onions, a meal is about to get down with the get down. So as you can see, I'm just taking those five cloves and very simply dicing them. Now, we're going to be real. We're going to acknowledge those. What are those hands? Um... Didn't really think through the whole just getting over an eczema allergy bout and zoom in on the hands and also my nails look atrocious. But a real one will show you herself even when she is not in her best. Let me be free. I'm going to zoom through the rest of this because yikes y'all. I've heard my own pride and ego. But it's real. It's real. <laughs> First love, garlic. Then comes my second love, onions. I quickly did the thing where it's like, woo, it's cut in 10 seconds or less. But I just dice about a fourth of an onion into some small cubes. This is going to go with my potatoes. I don't usually like the blend the grocery store makes. And so I usually make my own. But here, we're going to set the stove to a low, medium, medium low heat. And let the pan get hot. A big cooking pro tip is to not right when you set the um, pan to heat. Do you put olive oil in? But you actually wait until the pan is hot. Now this is a very this is a professional stove, so the pan gets hot quickly. So you're gonna see me um, check to see what the heat is. Ooh, little ah, uh, you know. Ooh, okay, hot. And put about two tablespoons of olive oil into the skillet let that get a little hot like I said it gets pretty hot really quickly and you see me just kind of derping around getting about half of that diced garlic and doing the thing that I love the most here it comes yes love this part here this is where you turn a house into a home a house into a home with the smell love this one I would come home from school and now that my mom is making something delicious, well, at least it's not delicious. Kidding, it was always good. Now we're getting into the part that everybody cares about. Where all your white people friends have been searching for, have been wanting to know, and that is the seasoning cabinet. Let me give you the scoop. You want your pink Himalayan salt. You want your cayenne pepper. Where is it? It is. She's looking. She's looking. Oh, nope. She grabbed pepper instead. JK, but you need that too. We're looking for that cayenne pepper. I grabbed it, of course. And my holy grail, my holy grail, busted finger and all, smoked paprika, my love. I like, I want to sing to it, like, reunited and it feels so good. 
by seasonings. We'll get back a little later on, but this is where we separate the boys from the men, the cats from the dogs, a binary to another, separations and exclusive categories. This is where it happens. We're going to start with the salt, Himalayan salt. I mean, it's kind of bouge. I'm a little bouge. Not necessary, but you saw I do like a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half, no hypertension. Cayenne pepper, I do about mm, two, about a tablespoon. I'm not a big spice person, but if you want your to hot, 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 go for it. So these are like staples in basically whatever I cook, but it's good. And it makes it nice and pretty and adds a nice caramelization to it. Now we're going to add pepper, about a tablespoon pepper. Love it. Pepper adds a nice crust and has a lot of health benefits, including um, it being a benefit to your immune system. Um, and then we have smoked paprika. If you like a more smoky, kind of meaty taste without eating meat, with that kind of that mesquite moment, smoked paprika just smells good. And it's the creme de la crop of life. Jesus Christ, amen. Did you hear me? Where's the sacrament? Thought I hit y'all with the slow mo. Look at that caramelization. That ca ca caramelization. Potato time. Potato time. I saw these at Safeway and I was like, ooh, okay. That's nice and interesting. I like to starch it up and so throwing those in there. Letting them have a little party in the pan. Especially now that they have the base seasoning of the onions and so it can only go up in flavor from here. As I was doing this, I was like, you know, there needs to be more color and texture on this. I'm kind of somebody when I cook that there's not really a script, like, oh, I use these seasonings, that's it, that's all. It's very much so, as I cook, hmm, what else could add to this? Or what could I do to make this visually speak to me? And I guess for this meal, I needed something else to speak to me. And at some point, when I decide to walk back over, because I think that I got lost in thought and started thinking about what to put in, the pot. I guess I'll wait. Let's stir these potatoes. Hey, Fred, Susan, Janet, Bob, Sandy. How's the how's the good cousin Luke? That's Luke and Flock One right there. You know, huh. potato family. But uh, it's a good time to talk to the to the potato family and see what's good. I don't know what it is I'm doing or why I'm taking so long. Oh, there I am getting the time. I'm not going to do an instruction for this, just like, you know, what feels right ahead. I added some time. I would say about two tablespoons, that looks like. About two tablespoons of time. And then a little bit more salt. It's I don't want to do too much salt in life with this. Breaking the stigma that to season something means that you have to overdo it with salt, my black people. We're out here, but we're out here doing it right. And I added a little more smoked paprika because, like I said, it's my go-to holy grail. Mix that around. Get it right, get it back. Really decided to aim up the party by adding some pesto paste to this. I'm in love with pesto, all things herbs, but honestly, all things not marinara. That's where you find your girl. I really do not like red sauce, but white sauces and green sauces, I'm like here for it. So whenever I have a chance to put pesto on potatoes, I take that chance. And so that with thyme and this with paprika, always a good call. Now to get into these broccolini. Didn't really know what broccolini was probably until I was in about high school. Didn't get the point. I was just like, so broccoli's attractive cousin that only comes around during like important family cookouts. That's how I thought about broccolini. But I definitely appreciate it now that I'm older. 
I generally like my broccoli to be like really really crispy and like like blackened almost but broccolini I kind of appreciate more if it's raw texture so how I cook this is it's about mm, five minutes I kind of warp the time here for y'all but about five minutes in the garlic to let the steam kind of cook the broccoli it doesn't get too crispy and I keep it really simple just so that uh, it cooks down but it retains a lot of its OG nutrients and OD structure with the added benefit of the garlic and the oil to kind of loosen it up real simple real easy you can see the potatoes over there chilling like hey we ready for this plate to be done I'm also ready for this plate to be done I started cooking this, y'all, at, like, no lie, 9 p.m. Not been eating the best the past few days. I really wanted to make a meal for myself after going grocery shopping that had substance and was, like, healthy enough. Um, never to eat this late, right? But at least eating something that had some, had some girth to it, had some stamina, had some, had some, uh, you know, ah, a little pop to it, um. But yeah, no, I really do enjoy cooking. I hope that y'all are enjoying this. If you are, why not hit it with the subscribe right now. Comment below if there are any kind of meals or recipes that you'd be interested in watching me cook or attempt to try. Like I said, I love to cook. And so this is not something that I'm just doing for the tube, but something that I have a great passion for because I think that food is an important uh, component of life. I think I'm taking Dr. Mark, I think it is Hyman, not Hyman, LOL, not Mark Hyman, but Red Tail Talk, I mentioned him, but how food is medicine, and I really do subscribe to that notion, and the more that we know about it, the more that we study it, and in particular to how we react to it, to our individual bodies, the more we can learn about ourselves, so I'm going to get off that soapbox, and finish making this video. Let's get back to making this broccolini. Cook, cook, cook. Y'all don't know how suave I wanted to make this little drop of broccoli on the plate moment. But I'm just not going to get that moment right now. But just know, this moment was thought about a lot. But there goes the broccolini on the plate. Yeah, at this point I want it to be done, so I apologize for the quickness. But I'm just adding salt, pepper, and cayenne pepper to this for a quick blackened crust. Um, I will do a more detailed video about how I make the perfect blackened salmon, which I do think I have perfected so that it's flaky and juicy and not that nasty dried outness. But here we go. Doing this over medium heat. Oh, showing you how the drink because like I said, this was supposed to be a tipsy voiceover, but alcohol did not want to do the job. <laughs> And just like that, y'all, we have a salmon dinner with broccolini and a pesto potato thing. Thank you so much for coming over to my channel. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and say some things that you want me to cook next time. Bye.